your hands lifted up. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for loving kindness, for tender mercies, for your steadfast love, for mercies that never comes to an end. Thank you for fresh mercy. Thank you for new mercies. Thank you for mercy renewed towards me every morning. For great is thy faithfulness. See, Heavenly Father, as we gather this morning across the nations of the world, we have come to draw. We've come to be illuminated, to be enlightened, to receive instruction, clarity and direction, to make sense of the reason for our being, that we will not miss it, that we will not miss it. The name of Jesus, right now, let the veil be lifted. We remove the veil. We block setbacks. We intercept every manipulation, programmings, in the name of Jesus, to set us back, to deny us, to take from us, in the name of Jesus, right now, we neutralize, intercept, every programming of the adversary behind the scenes as we put our hands together we command breakthroughs 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 new beginnings breakthroughs new beginnings breakthroughs new beginnings on every side across the nation in every church in every city in every home in every family in countries, in communities, in churches, in businesses, in homes, in families. Let there be breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. Amen. Before you are seated, just tell somebody, whoever they are, wherever they are, tell them you are needed. Tell them you are needed. You are needed. Yeah, I need it. Can you personalize it? You know, I want to, I wanted to say something, but I have to be careful. I wanted to say, tell somebody I need you, but then I thought about it. How do you tell somebody's wife I need you? So, <laughs> amen. Just tell somebody we love you, welcome you, put your hands together, give God praise, amen. You know, you know, Bishop James is standing next to my wife, and I can imagine Bishop James telling my wife, I need you. I need you. Hey, Bishop James, put your hands together. Thank God for Bishop James. <laughs> Please be seated. Give God some praise in the house. Amen. Laughter is good like medicine. Amen. Now, just want to talk to you. Can I talk to you today? Yeah. Today, what I'm going to do is teach, preach, and talk. Say, teach, preach, and talk. So I'm going to try and talk to you. Uh, one of the greatest weapons that the enemy has deployed in this end time to take lives prematurely is the weapon of loneliness. So many people are lonely. And I've been praying and thinking, and I realize that the true cure and remedy and prescription to loneliness is connectivity. You got to connect. If you don't connect, the adversary will find a way to isolate so he can eliminate. You cannot eliminate unless you are isolated. You can't be eliminated unless you are isolated. And the ad the strategy of the adversary is to give you reasons why you should be isolated from others. And some of the reasons don't make sense. It's just foolishness. Somebody is offended. Somebody is hurt. Somebody feels I don't want to be misunderstood. I don't want people to talk about me. But listen, people will talk about you whether you are isolated or connected. So let me just tell you. People are people. Whatever human beings are, they're going to talk about you. 
I was talking to a, somebody yesterday, and I said, who do men say that I am? Jesus asked that question. What are people saying about me? How do they perceive me? And she told me something. I said, wow, after 45 years, people still see me this way? Then they will never know me 100 years from now. And I just concluded that even the Lord Jesus, people still talk, there, there's a movie about Jesus and Mary Mandalene. It's just crazy. And, and I say, hey, if they talk about my master, better, greater than I, who am I? So you know what? People are always going to be people and people are always going to be petty and talk about you, whether you do wrong or right. It is what it is. So just please God. That's it. Just please God. <laughs> Because folks are going to talk about you anyway. It doesn't matter what you do, they're still going to talk about you. Amen? But that shouldn't be a reason why you shouldn't connect. And so there are so many reasons why we disconnect and we are isolated. But it, it, it will lead you to death prematurely. It will take you out. And that's what the enemy always does. When he wants to take you out, the first thing he does is to give you reasons to be isolated. Reasons why you should be disconnected. And people say, well, I, I'm trying to mind my own business, respect my privacy. You know something? If you are my family and you are my loved one, I am not going to respect your privacy when you are in trouble. I will violate your privacy, save you, rescue you, and after that you can be mad and angry with me. I think it's a good place to put your hands. You know, this, this kind of... Uh, North America and the Western cultures respect my privacy, respect my privacy. You are my loved one, my brother, my sister. You are part of my tribe and my community and you are in trouble and you tell me I should respect your privacy and leave you to die. I will violate it, rescue you, save you and after I'll save you, if you don't say thank you at least, the fact that I rescued you, I thank God that you are still here and still alive. Come on, somebody, put your hands together. We are not raised with that kind of mentality, but we are raising kids today where we're giving them all kinds of exposure. We send them abroad, go to school, they come back, and they've learned things that is contrary to our upbringing. They come back here, and they lock themselves in the room and say, don't, don't come to my room. Don't come where? I will break the door. You live in my house. I'm paying the electricity bill. I'm paying everything. You don't pay anything. And you have the audacity to say, I, can't, I will break that door with a, with a, what do you call it? I will get a machine. What do you call those bulldozers? I will bring a bulldozer. That door, come in, break that door and talk to you. How dare you? Tell me. Tell me, respect my, you have no privacy in my house. You don't have a privacy. Even in your house, if you dare me, you are in trouble. I'm going to come there and break your door. As long as I'm your dad, and you can go call 119, call the police. I'll get the best lawyer in town. Don't even look at me that way. You know? There is all kinds of foolishness going on and people are dying premature. They are lonely. They, they are living with all kinds of medications. They are literally dying slowly, killing me softly. They are wasting away all in the name of my privacy. Trying to be on my own. Let me mind my own business. Brother, you belong to our tribe. You got no business on your own. I'm in your business. Then somebody said, well, I don't want anybody to know my secret. Are you an arm robber? What kind of secret do you have that you don't want anybody to know? Some of you, nobody knows your house. You've been in this for 30 years. Nobody knows where you live. We don't even know what you do for living. You become a mystery. We demystify your mystery in the name of Jesus today. Everybody needs somebody. God never made us to be an island to ourselves. As long as you lead, you live, you're going to need somebody. And I'll show you in the Bible, great men, mighty warriors, kings, prophets, and princes, men after God's own heart, who were strong at the field of battle, and they killed lions with their bare hands, and killed thousands 
of soldiers, giants, by their hands, empty hands. There came a time in all of their lives when they needed somebody. And today, you may think you are, you are, you are, you are living pretty. So you don't need anybody. May I announce to you that you've been deceived? That is a bewitchment. You've been deceived and you've been fooled. Because hear me, none of us are wiser than the creator. None, none of the creation of the creator is wiser than the creator. The creator in Genesis began by saying, let us make man in our own image after our own likeness. He didn't say, let me. He could have said, let me. And he could have said, I will make man in my own image. He didn't say that. He said, let the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost make man in our own image after our own likeness. You know, the beginning, Genesis, is the beginning of all things. You know, I was talking to a preacher the other day, and he was saying that, you know, we can marry two, three, four, five. And he was arguing and proving his point from the same Bible. And I said, let me tell you something. It's great to marry many wives, but the wise man, Solomon said, is vanity. And I said, I don't know how to handle even one yet. Much more many. You got no idea what you're dealing with. But Solomon was the only one who could handle that many because he was given wisdom. I have wisdom, but not the one to handle many. Yeah, Solomon's own could handle many. I don't know how to handle many with the wisdom I have. I'm trying to battle and manage what I have. It's not, it's not easy. So those of you, anyway, I said, I said the best thing to do if you want to know God's original intent about whether you can marry plenty, just go to Genesis. If God wanted Adam to have more than one, he would have created Eve, Mary, Cynthia, Akoko, Ajua, Echa. He would have given many. So I said, leave it there. Go ahead. Leave it there. Somebody say, leave it there. Leave it there. So what am I saying here? Originally, God's original intent has not changed. But with mistakes, things can happen in life, okay? And God makes room. We call it exception to the rules or exemption from judgment. He makes exceptions to certain situations. But what I'm trying to say here is for us to look at the original plan and intent of God. It doesn't change. Come with me to Rebbe, to Genesis 2.18. Now, people quote this scripture for marriage. Every time they talk about marriage, they go to this scripture in the book of Genesis. But I want you to realize that it's more than just a matter of husband and wife or marriage. It's talking about something God realized and he felt this loneliness from man. Man was lonely. Man was alone. Man needed a companion. Man needed to be completed and fulfilled. And God didn't bring an animal. You know, the, I preached in the church many years ago. I won't mention the city in America. And they brought this beautiful woman and the husband to me. And the bishop of the church said, we need you to pray for her. And she had an issue with having an affair with dogs when she was kid, when she was a kid, and she grew with it. And anytime she's married, and anytime she sees dogs, she has this edge for dogs. And, and I had to pray. And the husband was standing there. He really loved the woman, beautiful girl. And when I said, come out in the name of Jesus, she barked like a dog. But that is how low we can go when we miss it. And there was a reason for that. I don't want to go into it. Parents were always gone. And she was left alone with the dogs and the puppies in the house. But we'll deal with that. Genesis 2, 18. Genesis 2, 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that a man should be alone. So watch this. Everything God did and created, he said it was good. Everything was good, but one thing that wasn't good was the man was alone. Tell somebody you need somebody. Yeah, yeah. I know you are sitting pretty, but you need somebody. I know you are loaded, 
But I came to announce to you, you need somebody. And you may not feel it right now. You may not know it right now. But there will come a day and a time when you're going to feel it. You see, if you look at the president of Iraq, he ended up in a hole, in a pit with millions of dollars. He went in there with money. But the money couldn't save him. The money couldn't deliver him. Gaddafi, great warrior, great man, ended up in a hole and the money couldn't deliver him. There come a time in all of our lives when money fails, when you're going to need somebody. You may not need it today, but there will come a day. And I'll show you in the Bible, a great warrior and a king and a priest and a prophet and a man after God's almighty own heart came to a moment in his life when he was almost taken out prematurely before his time until one of his mighty men whom he has invested into came to deliver him. When you have opportunity in life, invest into others, please. When you have the opportunity, help others. And not all will remember you. Not all will be loyal. Not all will come back to say thank you like the ten lepers. One came back, nine didn't. But keep helping. Keep helping people. Keep blessing people because you never know which one will come back to say thank you. You keep doing it. I have been betrayed over and over and over again. And I will not stop doing good and being good and helping others. I can't do it. I'm not going to stop doing it because I don't know which one will come back tomorrow and help me tomorrow. And I don't know who will help any of my kids or their, my grandchildren in their day. So I'm just going to keep on blessing people. I'm going to keep on helping people because that is who I am. And I'm, I'm wired to help and to bless people. Even those who exploit, take advantage of me, is your problem. But I'm going to keep blessing you anyway. You think you're exploiting me, taking advantage of me, is your problem. It's not mine. Hear me? And God said, everything I created and everything I did is good. But there's one thing that is not good. This man made in my own image. He's just all alone by himself. He needs someone just like him. Yeah, that's why every one of you must belong to a tribe in the church. And that's why I put together the 12 tribes of action. You got to belong to a tribe. You can't stand alone. It's dangerous to be hanging and not to belong. And I said in the first service, sometimes when people do things wrong and they are fired and dismissed, you see members following them, helping them to go start their own church. You know this building standing here? There are so many things we have to bring together to build this house. We are the temple of God. We are the house of God. We needed iron rocks. Iron rocks alone couldn't build this building. Yeah. And I may be the iron rocks, but you may be cement. And cement doesn't build a house on its own. Cement needs water. And water doesn't build alone. And seamen need stones, chippings. And chipping don't build alone. And you need sand to bring this all together in order to have a foundation. And then to raise the column, you need stones, you need iron rods, you need sand. And then you need blocks. You need so many components. So if you follow somebody to start a church who is an iron rod, your building is an iron rod building. It will fall apart. Cement alone can't build anything. And that's why there are so many churches, they can't last for too long. They come, they grow overnight, they are huge, they're everywhere. And it's just a matter of time. And the wind comes, and the rain comes, and the flood descends. And they don't have enough foundation because they weren't built with all the necessary components. So be careful. Be careful. Don't follow a gift. Don't follow cement. Iron, rock, iron rocks or stones, chips, chippings. Don't follow that. Work with that which is all together. Work with all together. Yeah. Be in a house. Don't follow the materials we used to build. Be in the building. Be part of a house. Those that are planted in the house of our God will flourish in the courts of our God. You don't flourish if you are not planted. So be planted. 
Do God do Vadisa. Akayanda Vasa. Lift up your and talk to the Father for one minute, everybody. In your own language, English, tongues, whatever. No Sakadula Mahadisis. Ulayandu Kafadim Musa. Hey, Kikromu Bahasa. Alabutukum Madim Vadin Subadahaya. In Jesus' name, amen. Come with me. Come with me quickly. Loneliness, 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 loneliness is killing people. It's a number one killer. During the time of the pandemic, I was told that loneliness killed so many people. There were billionaires who hung themselves. They jump off high buildings and ended their life with all their billions. I'm told a billionaire went to bed, he had about 11 billion. The next day, something had gone wrong with the stock market or so. He ended up with about three, four billion dollars and decided to end his life. A fool. You lost a few billions and you end your life. When the same life created it, then you can create it again. What's your problem? Tell someone, what's wrong with you? Yeah, what's wrong with you? Loneliness. Feeling all alone. A feeling of rejection. A feeling that somebody don't like you. You feel misrepresented. Yeah, you feel like nobody understands you. And people do all kinds of things to be loved, to be wanted. You can do things for love, and you can do things to be loved. Amen? But you gotta check it. And sometimes you feel like people don't like you when they really do like you. Yeah. Just a lie of the devil. A guy came to me the other day and he had called a friend. And for weeks, he wasn't returning his call. And he felt something is wrong. Papa, pray. He's a good friend of mine. We've been together. I don't know what I've done wrong. And I said, how about if you haven't done anything wrong and the guy is in trouble? He said, well, I haven't thought about that. But Papa, is weak. He should have called me. I said, hey, 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 hey. Focus on something. Give him time. When he called back after many weeks, he was in trouble. He almost died. And I have members in this church. There was a guy who was in trouble during the time of the pandemic, and he didn't call me. I didn't hear him. I was there, and I called Bishop Buddha. I said, Bishop, so, so, and so, have you seen him? He said, no. I said, I think something is wrong. Let's call him. I called him. I said, come see me. He came. I said, I haven't seen you. What's going on? He said, Papa, you won't believe it. I almost died. I said, what, was, what happened? And when he told me the story, and I said, but why didn't you call me? Why didn't you call Bishop Nyaku, Bishop James, Bishop Boda? He said, Papa, it didn't cross my mind. And I said, wow, that is how good the enemy is. He can make you forget to call for help. He isolates you to take you out. I declare that the enemy won't take you out. I declare you will not be isolated. And I declare you will be wise. You'll be wise. And sometimes people, are, people, people cut off and disconnect from others because they are, good, they are doing good. They, they come into some material blessing and they have some deep pocket and they have money and you have a car and you have resources and you have possessions and you can travel anywhere you want to and you are in a good place and you are connected and you have influence. Hear me? None of those things are reasons why you should disconnect because it's just a matter of time. Any one of those things are sinking sand. They are all the arm of flesh. And cursed be anyone who put their trust in the arm of flesh. Don't do it. Don't do it. Relationship is the tree upon which money and longevity grows. I was telling somebody yesterday, if you, if you put a billion dollars here and you put goodwill here, I would take goodwill. Because you can lose a billion dollars, but goodwill guarantees longevity. Goodwill will take you places money can take you. I'll go for goodwill. I have done so many things in life by, by goodwill and not by money. And I've seen people with deep pockets more than I, have money more than I, and I've gone places. I went to a place somewhere in Africa, and the presidential suite was taken. And I said, fine, just give me executive, whatever. And when the owner of the hotel heard that it was me, he said, cancel the booking for, and it was a head of state. He said, cancel it. 
give the presidential suite to Papa. And I said, whoa. And I was there when whoever has to come came, big man, with all his security. I didn't have any security, but I had angels. And, and, the, and I didn't pay for mine. I didn't pay for mine. It was free. They gave it to me free. And I have all my guys, my pastors, everybody who were in this huge room with three other rooms connected. I mean, it was huge and beautiful and nice. And I said, yeah, thank you, Lord. That's, that is favor. That is goodwill. I didn't pay for it. And he came and they put him in some executive room around me. But when the owner heard that it was Archbishop, he said, give the presidential suite to Papa. You know what that is? That is no money. That is not money. Those of you think money is everything. That is what you call goodwill. That's what you call favor. Not him that willeth, nor him that runs, but God that showeth mercy. Come on, put your hands together. Say yes. Hear me? The race is not to the swift. Come on, somebody. Nor the battle to the strong, nor riches to men of skill or understanding, but time and chance happen to all. If you believe it, somebody put your hands together, shout yes. <laughs> I have seen what goodwill does. I'm telling you. Sometimes I have walked away from money. I walk away from deals. I walk away. Yeah. Somebody gave me a land, lots of acres of land, a chief, and he said, register it in your name. You can have it. Pay me as you want to. It wasn't long and he died. Then the family, the children, everybody came fighting, and my attorney said this, and I said, you know something? It's for your father. They can have it. So I said, sell it. The documents are there. You sell it, I'll give you the papers. You can take it. So I'm like, Papa, you can't do that. You, you, and I said, forget it. It's not my land. It's for their father. He gave it to me. I have him paid. The children want it. They can have it. What's my problem? Legally, it's mine. But even though it's mine legally, it's not mine. So I'm not going to take something that doesn't belong to me. It's not a blessing. It brings a curse. I'm not going to touch it. Give it up. And then they came back and said, Papa, you can take whatever you want. And I said, I'm not taking anything. You give me something. And whatever you give me, I'll pay for it. It's simple as that. It's conscience. That's conscience. Amen? And, and you know why I did that? Because the father, the old man was good to me. He was a good man. I had a good relationship with me, with him. He trusted me. Even though he has passed, I will not do his children wrong. I will not do them wrong. You know why? Not because of them. I don't even know them. I haven't met them before. But because of my relationship with their father, I've got to do right by them. Somebody say relationship. Come with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Bishop, chapter 4. Reading from verse, verse 9. 9 to 12. Look at it. Two are better than one. Two are better than one. This is Solomon speaking. This is the, the guy that was so deep in wisdom. Wisest man that ever lived, did all kinds of crazy stuff. He said two is better than one. And may I announce and submit to you, if the Bible says two is better than one, I don't care what your reason is from disconnecting. You are wrong. You're wrong. And one of these days, you're going to need somebody. And God will make sure you find yourself in a situation that requires another man's help. You find it. Go ahead. Because they have a good reward for their labor. They have a good reward if they are two. Uh -huh. For if they fall, mm -hmm. the one will lift up his fellow. Yes, sir. But woe to him that is alone when he falls. The Bible says woe unto those of you who disconnect. Always on your own. Having reasons why you sit at the back. I sit in the corner. Who told you you belong to the back? The Bible says you shall be above only and not beneath. The head and not the tail. So why are you always at the background? Me, that is why I am. 
Me, I'm like that. I can't change. Who told you you can't change? The Bible says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. The Bible says all things are possible to him that believe it. So you can change. Stop being at the background. You are, you are now at the background because you are loaded now. You don't want to be bothered. You're in a good place. You have influence. You have access. And you don't want anybody to know how blessed and loaded you are. So you are now at the background. When you were broke before, you were nothing. You are always close to the pulpit. Immediately after the service, you come to the altar. You stay at the altar. I have to sack you. Before now, now you don't come to the altar at all. You have your own altar. You build your own altar in your house. Hey, whatever. You're powerful, oh. Go ahead. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. Yes. For he hath not another to help him up. Uh -huh. Again, if two lie together, uh -huh. then they have heat. Uh -huh. But how can one be warm alone? Uh -huh. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. Uh -huh. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. That's it. Twofold, threefold cord is not easily broken. If you stand alone, something will break you. But if you stand with others, they have to take everybody out to get hold of you. And that is what it is all about. Being connected. Jesus, the son of God, was of the tribe of Judah. Paul, the tribe of Benjamin. Moses, the tribe of Levi. What tribe do you belong to? Where did you come from? Who are you? Show me your DNA. And the tribe you come from, I'll predict your future. It's not where you stand right now, nor what you have, nor your possession, nor your accomplishment, nor the goals. It is your DNA, the tribe you come from, that defines who you are. I can look through your DNA. That has to do with your tribe, your bloodline. Then I can tell where you're going. Kuda aduna sada houses. Lekatula kasa wan filahan kuwan sitan kila aita kuwasindi balakatindo basada. Hey, show me who your father is. I can tell you who son you are and what you become. Deuteronomy 32, 30. Deuteronomy 32, 30. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight? That's the key. He said, you stand alone, you can only handle a thousand. That's all you can handle. And it doesn't matter what your reason is for being alone. You can only conquer a thousand enemies. But you want to do more than a thousand, you need someone else. Can you imagine? 9,000 enemies, if you can just connect with someone. What is your problem? You think you are strong? You are weak. Ask Samson what happened to him. Brother Samson was a judge. The dude was smart. The dude was brilliant. He was skillful. With, with nothing in his hand, he killed a lion who killed thousands of the Philistines' army. One man. But there came a time when his brilliance and skill and strength and success could not handle him. And a little, little, little short woman by the name of Delilah, a hired assassin, took care of him. Yeah. Yeah. And his, someone he called his friend took his wife. He wasn't a friend. The guy wasn't friendly. He didn't know how to have a friend. So the guy, he called his friend, slept with his wife. But if it's a true friend, you say, when you know how to build relationships, people last around you. They last. Bishop, how long have you been around me? Eighty-nine. Calculate eighty-nine to nine is how many? Quickly. Thirty-three years, Bishop. Bishop, how long have I known you? 46 years. All right. Two. 34 years. You. 30. 30 years. 
And I can go, I can ask everybody here. I'm a long time relationship person. I don't like overnight relationship. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, I go for a long time relationship. And I can ask everybody seated here. Bishop, how long have I known you? Bishop David. Stand, stand, stand. How long have I known you? Eh? I dedicated him when he was a baby. Yeah. He's a big man now. Yeah. He's taller than me. Yeah, yeah. When I stand with him, he's taller than me. But I dedicated him. So don't underestimate me. I know something. Hallelujah. Thank you, Bishop. And I can go ahead and go ahead. But Bishop, 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 how long have you been with me? 41 years. 41 years. You know? And you know why they are still around here? Because I know how to keep relationship. You think we haven't had a reason to fall out? Oh, we have several reasons. We've had several reasons to fall out. But when I weigh the importance and the value of these people in my life, I will let go anything, overlook anything to still have them around. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You think, you think they haven't offended me before? Yeah, 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 they've offended me, and I have also offended them. Yeah, they do me, I do them. <laughs> that, that's human. Are you hearing me? That is the human nature. That is the fallen nature of man. I'm not an angel. I'm not perfect. None of my bishops are perfect. The most perfect one among us is Bishop Yankun, this one. He, he is the lamb of God that taketh away the sin of this world. He is a lamb. But, but some of us, we are goats and sometimes sheep and you name it, whatever. But, 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 but when you look at the value of the relationship, the value of the relationship, you overlook some things. The reason why some of you, you give up on people too early is because you don't know the value of that relationship. And you are looking at the wrong side of the person, but just look at the good side. You'll be surprised that there's something good about that person. Yeah, 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 there's something good. You know, my driver, he has driven me for 38 years. And recently I looked at him, I said, Francis, you're tired. You've been driving me for 38 years. I said, retire him, but still stay around. Go on, retirement, but stay around me. It's still my body. Let's stay together. You'll be fine. Take care of you. Stay around. And there was something I needed, and nobody around could find it. And I said, you know the person who can find it? Francis. So I said, go get Francis. And Francis, he was the only one. I even didn't know where that thing was. Francis was the only one who knew it. He said, oh, in Legia, in Legia, in Legia. And he took them there. And I said to myself, you know something? If I had mishandled the guy and I didn't treat him well, I couldn't have sent to him. I couldn't have called him. I can call him any time in the night. I say, Francis, no more. I call him, no more. They tell hey, bye, hey. Oh, I just go. No more, hey, no more. I say, you got to learn to value people. He's not just a driver. He's, he's one of my divine helpers. He drove me for 38 years. We never had an accident by the grace of God for 38 years. 38 years. Not one day and we've been in situation where God had given us divine escape with all kinds of accidents. 38 years. I'm not going to throw him away. You have a problem with him, it's your business. I got no problem with him. You don't like him, it's between you and him, but I like him. Psalm 133, verse 1 to 3. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. This is God's own perception and how God views us. When we stay together. Ladies and gentlemen, there is something. There is something about us being together. Ah, there's something about being together than being alone. 
One of my brothers, I have, I have 43 brothers and sisters. Now don't look at me with that religious look because you got more than me and you. Amen? And he was in a church in the U.S. Good church. I know the pastor very well. Ghanaian pastor. Great church. And something happened between him and the church. I don't know the details. And he refused to go to church. The pastor will call. He won't respond. Members of the church tried everything. He won't respond. He wasn't part of anything in the church. So it was easy for him to pull out. But if you are connected, it's difficult to pull out. Because your tribe will come after you. The pastor called him. A few people called him. He didn't respond. After a long while, apparently he was dead. In the room, stinking, he was dead. Now, why did the enemy kill him? The enemy wanted to kill him. And he knew that as long as he was connected, it would be difficult. So what to do? Isolate him and then eliminate. May I tell you something? Anytime you disconnect, there is a strong possibility that in the realms of the spirit, there is a claim and a demand for your life. And the only way the enemy can take you out is to isolate you because two is better than one. He takes you out, disconnects you from the brethren. And listen, it doesn't matter what your reason is. I don't care who you are. You can be the president of the world. You're still going to need somebody. You know, a very wealthy man, in one of these African countries invited the then president. The president came home and they don't eat salt. So they cooked this meal. And the meal was good. But the president asked for salt. They didn't have salt. <clears throat> and the president stopped eating. He was waiting for the salt. <clears throat> and the wife said, no problem, Mr. President, we'll get you some salt. So he went to the kitchen and said to the Chef, what are we going to do? We don't have salt in this house. And the cook said, don't worry, don't worry. I think I have salt somewhere. And he ran through, ran out of the kitchen, went to a poor neighbor in the community and asked for salt and brought it in and worked it down and everything, gave it to the lady. They sent it to the president. He put the salt in and the food was good. And the president ate the food and said, Madam, 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 I'll come again. Can I come again? Your food was delicious and everything. There was one element missing. Salt. And later when the president left, after praising the woman and everything, the wife went to the chef and said, how did you fix it? Where did you get the salt from? He said, our neighbor. That poor neighbor. Living in a mad house. So they decided they're going to build a house. They build a place for the neighbor. Hear me? You never know who you need tomorrow. I'm telling you. So be nice to people. I'm telling you, be nice to people because you never know who you will need tomorrow. I'm telling you. I've watched this. You know, there was a time, there was a guy in this church. He was a banker and he was accused to the then president of Ghana. And I went to the president and I said, Mr. President, he's a member of my church. He's innocent. He said, Archbishop, are you sure? I said, yes, Mr. President. He's innocent. He's a good man. He said, we have evidence. And I said, Mr. President, it's not true. So the president called the attorney general and he called the then vice president. And the vice president came and the attorney general came and we met in the president's office. And he said to them, I was then a bishop. He said, the bishops believe that we have the wrong man and that the man is innocent. And he said, Bishop, can you put your reputation on the line? I said, Mr. President, I'll do it. The man is innocent. So we talked about it. And the president said to the attorney general, please go slow on the matter. If the bishop feels strongly about this guy, you have to go slow on the way you are handling the prosecution. Then from there, I went to serious fraud. I met some guys that I won't mention their name. And I said, I'm just coming from the office of the president. And uh, I respect you and respect your, your job. But I think you have to know that the man you are going after is innocent. And I said, you don't have to believe me, but one of these days, you will see that the man is innocent. He was in court for many years. He lost everything. And one day, the prosecutor stood up in court and confessed to the judge that, my Lord, I was given instructions and orders 
to prosecute this man with information given to me that hasn't been verified. The man is innocent. At that time, they've destroyed him. They took away everything from him. And they, they accuse him about a client that he gave some, a loan to a client and had a kickback. So I know the client very well. So I called him and said, come, let's talk. I said, Amaga, talk to me. I'm told that this guy gave you so much money to set up this business and um, you took care of him. He said, Papa, let me tell you the truth. That your guy, he's a very serious guy. I haven't met a banker like that. I said, what do you mean? He said, after he did all this, at Christmas, I took a goat and some things to his house just to thank him. And he told me, please, with all respect, I appreciate your gratitude, but you can take everything back. I don't need anything. Thank you so much. And he said, he told me to take everything back and I have to take it. He said, I was so embarrassed and ashamed. Meanwhile, that particular guy was also charged that he was among those who gave him a kickback. That is how wicked people can be in this country. They can so implicate you and set you up, but for God, you can pull out. And when I, when I started defending him, a newspaper came after me. A newspaper came after me that he had given me some money. And that's why I'm defending him. So I called the newspaper guy and I said, Sir, you have to get your facts right. Though. Because me, I don't have newspaper. But I have something you don't have. So I beg you, don't let me pray some prayers. Because my prayers, it works. Yeah, yeah, it does. It, it works. So we talked about it. And then he told me who gave him the information. That somebody at the office of the president gave him that information to plant it in the paper against me. To get me to back off. Anyway, hear me. We became friends after that. We became very good friends. Yeah, he, he, he died. But we became friends. I didn't pray for him to die. But. He became a good friend of mine. I didn't want him to die. He became a good friend of mine before he passed. But I'm saying that relationship works. Yeah, I'm telling you. It will take you places. And don't be bitter about people. And don't retaliate. Don't pay evil for evil. Listen, there's only one thing that overcomes evil in life. And that is good. The Bible says overcoming evil with good. Good is the only thing that overcomes evil. When you decide to be good, you'll be misrepresented, you'll be exploited, people will look down on you, take advantage, they will call you names, but it's okay. You see, this race in life, eh, it's all about your relationship with God at the end of the day. That's it. At the end of the day, it's about how God views you and being at peace with God and at peace with yourself and at peace with your neighbor. That's it. Amen? Finish Psalm 133. One, Behold two. how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. In unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head uh -huh. that ran down upon the beard, uh -huh. even Aaron's beard, that uh -huh. went down to the skirts of his garment. Yes, sir. As a dew of Hermon, mm -hmm. and as a dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. Yes. For there the Lord commanded the blessing. There. The Lord commanded Talk the blessing. Talk to me. There. The Lord commanded the blessing. I can't hear you. There. The Lord commanded the blessing. There. The Lord commanded the blessing. God said, when I see you together, in love and in unity, I will command. Remember when God said, let there be light. Let there be light in the beginning. The darkness could not prevent or resist the light. And there is a blessing you don't pray for. You don't fast for. That one is given to us. When we come together, God commands that blessing. And not just that, but long life, longevity comes. There are many reasons for long life, but this is one of the reasons for long life. You endure, you'll be around for a long time. You know, some time ago I was taking a particular medication. And, and I felt funny in my spirit. So Rosa was out of town. So I called and I said, babe, uh, I want you to check this out for me. I, I, I want to take this medication. 
but I've taken this other medication already. And he, she checked it out. She called me. She said, no, you can't take it. And I said, why? He said, the two don't work together. It's very dangerous. You can't take this and take that. And I just said to myself, you know, come on medication. Just ordinary medication. You've taken one, you go and take something in that doesn't agree with the other, and it can just create crisis for you. And I just said to myself, it's so easy eh, for you yourself to kill yourself. You hear what I said? Yeah, you can kill yourself. And people kill themselves all the time. That's ordinary medication. It's not anything serious. But apparently they don't agree with each other. It's going to create some conflict for you. And if I didn't call to find out, if I was a loner, and if I was quarreling with her, some of you husband, you find with your wife, you won't call, you won't return call. What is wrong with you, husband? And some of you, you wear food, then you go and wear jeans and a belt. In the night, you're always sleeping with jeans and belt. Why? Hmm? That's what the Bible says, let not your, the sun go down on your anger. Try and resolve things. Don't walk around with bitterness and anger always in your heart. That's why you are fooling like that. You are going to best one of these days. Learn to let things go. Forgive. And hear me, forgiveness doesn't mean you are a fool. And forgiveness doesn't mean that people will go scot free. No, 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 no. You know what I learned over the years that made me to be very forgiving? I find out that when I forgive, what it means is that I have handed the matter over to somebody better than I to handle it. So when I forgive you, I've handed you over to God. That's what forgiveness means. It means that God will determine the verdict. I'm out of it. But one thing God allows me to do is to decide to trust you or not to trust you. That one is given to me. So I forgive you, but I don't trust you. Now, when it comes to the trust, you must work for it and you must earn it. And that one, I have the right to decide whether to trust you or not to trust you. But for forgiveness, I have to. Because God says, judge not that you may not be judged. And he said, if you don't forgive, neither will I forgive you. And I need forgiveness myself, so I have to forgive. And when I forgive, it means I've released the matter to God, and I say, you are the judge. I'm not the judge. Deal with it. Unforgiveness means you make yourself a judge. That's what it is. And God said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. Leave it to me. Let me deal with it. Let me handle it. Stay out of it. That's what forgiveness is. And whenever you say, no, 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 no. Do you know? You don't know what it, what it did to me. It doesn't matter what anyone did to you. Forgiveness is critical for your own good, for your own health. And when you forgive, it doesn't mean you should trust. That's not what God says. He said, forgive. But when it comes to trust, next time, I will love you, but from afar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I hear you are here to see me, I won't let you come to my office. I'll come down to the car park to meet you there. Yeah. I can trust you at the car park. I don't trust you in my office. That one is my right. But I've forgiven you. No bitterness, no pain, no harm. But trust, I have to decide. And I'll let you work hard, brother, sister. You're going to work so hard that when you come in again, hallelujah, you'll never do it again. Put your hands together and give God praise. Hallelujah. But in talking about Psalm 133 from 1 to 3, there's something here you, you got to learn. Learn to connect to the head. Somebody say the head. Do you know the oil flows from the head to the neck? To the beard, the shoulders, the hand, the feet, everything. Where does the oil come from? From the head. And one of the tricks of the enemy is to disconnect you from the head and get you connected to the neck, to the hand, the leg, the feet. I don't have a problem with some of you relating to my bishops 
It's okay, it's fine because it, it makes the work easy for me. But that is not the reason why it shouldn't be connected to the head because the oil flows from the head down. And the enemy has games and ways to keep you disconnected from the head to your own head. Stay connected. Are you clapping? All right, quickly. Quickly, come with me to Genesis 49. Genesis 49, quickly. One to two. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, uh -huh. Gather yourselves together. Somebody say together, together. Use the word together. Say together. together. Use that word again. Say together, together. together. Remember my message. Better together. Better together than alone. Better together than alone. Together. Go ahead. Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last day. Uh -huh. Gather yourselves together. You see, again, twice. Gather yourself together again. He said, I have advanced knowledge. Say advanced knowledge. I want to tell you of your future. I want to predict your future. But it's about you as a body being together, not as an individual. I will tell you what shall befall you as brethren, a tribe, a family, and not as an individual. Gather yourself together. There are things that you never know about the future unless we come together. You know why? The Chinese are strong. They're stronger than any country right now across the nations of the Chinese. Very powerful people. Very powerful. Any city you go to in the world, you have a Chinese restaurant or Chinatown. There are Chinatown everywhere. We don't have Ghanaian town anywhere. Even in Ghana, we don't have a Ghana town. We are so divided. What's wrong with you? So divided the people. And any kingdom and any nation that is divided against itself cannot stand, can't stand. I don't care how much you scheme, how good you are, and what you do, and what is at your disposal. It's just a matter of time, and you will know that God is God. And the word of God is true. He said, any house and any kingdom and any city or nation divided against itself cannot stand. Together, we are strong. Divided, we are weak. Kingdoms fall from within and they rise from within. I dare you from today, if you say you are a Christian and a child of God, learn to connect with others. Hear me? I was telling somebody yesterday, I said, we were made in the image of God. Anytime you show somebody love, you are showing God love. Because that person is, was made in the image of God. Just like God. It's the nature of God in them. But there's a falling part of man. The humanity of man. Then the God side of man. It's in everybody. And the Bible said, how can you say you love God that you haven't seen and hate Hate your brother or your sister that you see. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. You are lying. When was the last time you saw the Lord? And you hate somebody you see every day, made in the same image of the God you love that you haven't seen before. Stop playing games. Get real. Put your hands together. You can't say you love God, that you haven't seen you can't love man. And hear me, I know it's difficult to love man. Oh, yes, 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 yes. You talk about how difficult to, yes, yes, yes. It's difficult to love people. Yeah. I was telling the guys early this morning at prayer, about four this morning, I was talking to them about prayer, and I said to them, one of the greatest setbacks I've had in life, in ministry where people are helped, People are hell. And I said, those who really gave me hell were people from a very poor background. They were the ones that really showed me cayenne pepper. Say yes. You know what? Let me give you two scriptures and I think I'll let you go home. Amen. Philippians 2 2. Philippians 2 2. Fulfill ye my joy, mm -hmm. that ye be like-minded. Like-minded. Having the same love. Having the same love. Being of one accord. Being one accord. Of one mind. Of one mind. 
This thing where everybody has their own mind doing their own thing, it really doesn't help and build a community. Nations that do well are nations that are strong community. There are certain cities in the United States when, when a Jew breaks the law, they don't go for the Jew, they won't arrest you. They report you to the rabbi and the rabbi will go to your house and bring you in and hand you over to another Jewish police. If you go to prison, there is a, somebody there who, listen, they take care of themselves. They care for one another. I'm setting up the 12 tribe of action and I'm going to require every one here to belong to a tribe, to be part of a tribe. Is there, the, let me see the main bonds. How many main bonds do we have here? May bonds. Anybody born in May, stand. Those of you born in May, stand. Yeah. yeah. You see how many we are? We are very powerful. Don't be jealous of us. Amen. But watch this. Watch this. I'm part of the May bonds. Amen. I'm going to be the bishop of the May bonds. But we have, we have executives. We have executive of the May bonds. It's a tribe. The, we are the May tribe of action. That is our tribe. Me, Bones, are members of my tribe. So we'll look out for one another, empower one another. If I need a carpenter, I need a mason, and a computer scientist, a lawyer, a doctor, whatever I need, I'll go to my tribe to find out, is there anyone in the tribe who can help with this and with that? That is how we build a community. We take care of one another, we fight for one another, we protect one another. Counseling, marital counseling. We'll, we'll raise counselors among the tribes that will counsel people, take care of one another. We set up a trust for every tribe that the church puts money in, that, in the account. And then the tribes will also contribute money into those accounts to help members of the tribe. If you don't come to church, we'll look out for you. If you are sick, we come to you. You have a problem, we gather. The tribes must take care of one another. The church, as huge as it is, we can't handle everybody's problem. There are people hurting among us and nobody knows. There are people dying and nobody knows. There are people here today and they may die tomorrow if we don't reach out. If we don't help them and we don't know who they are and they are in church. Some of you have been in this church for 30 years. I don't know your house. I don't know who you are and what you do for a living, but every Sunday you are here. It has to stop. I have to know who you are, where you come from, what you do, where you live. And if you have challenges, leadership got to know. We don't have to wait for you to die. There are people who die and I ask Bishop, who is this? What happened? Oh, he's been here 20 years. Oh, 30 years, 10 years. And I say, how come I don't know? Well, yeah, then that. we can't allow that. We have to get involved with people and rescue them before it's too late. So you know what? Thank you, be seated, May Bonds. And we're gonna help every tribe. January is a tribe. February is a tribe. March is a tribe. April is a tribe. May, June, July, August. Yeah, September, October, November, December. You are all tribes. And the month you were born will require you to join the tribe of that month. And you have skills. If you can't be involved in the main church, be involved in the tribe. Use what you have. Build your tribe. Empower your tribe. Don't be a loner. Don't be a Samson who died with his enemies. He died alone without his siblings. Without a father and a mother. He died with his enemies. It was never meant to be that way. But it became that way when the man chose to walk all alone because he needed nobody, because he was anointed, skillful, intelligent, brilliant, smart, sharp, good, gifted. None of those things gives you the right to disconnect and to be isolated. Pray for you today. As we end this service, that you reconnect, that you find it in your heart to forgive, that you find it in your heart to need somebody. And you have to. You don't have to tell them everything. Just tell them, pray for me. 
I'm struggling with my emotions. I'm struggling with my flesh. I'm struggling with my thoughts. You don't have to let me know the details of where your mind is going to. I don't need to know the thought. Just say, pray for me. Pray for a sound mind. Pray that I have the mind of Christ. Pray against this mental bombardment by scattering my thinking and thoughts all over the place. Pray for me. Pray for my relationships. Pray for my marriage, please. Pray for me. You don't have to tell me details. I don't need to know the details. I'll pray for you. Let somebody hold you accountable. Let somebody look out for you. Please don't die prematurely. You don't have to. You can be around for a long time. Long life is a possibility. It is possible. And not just living long only, but being useful to family, your community, your tribe, to your country, to your generation. Be useful. Touch people. Bless people. Help somebody. And let me tell you something. If you think because you help people, people are going to laugh. You are joking. People will hurt you. They will offend you. They will misrepresent. They will mishandle. But that is okay. You keep doing what is good. Because good will always overcome evil. It's just a matter of time. Stand on your feet. Are you clapping? Now. 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 I want to do something here. Bishop Salah, come quickly. Bishop James, I need David. Bishop David, come. I need about two or three of you. Okay? Now, Bishop Stanley, please bring me that, uh, the, the cover of my microphone. I want to show you something. You see, a lot of you say that. Why am I being attacked by the enemy? Why do I have to? I have fought for everything in my life. Since my mother's womb. When my mother took seed of me, she bled for four months. Dr. Sacramante said, Florence, you can't carry this pregnancy. You are anemic. You've lost too much blood. So they went to theater. They performed a and c and I bought the child. Months after the stomach kept growing, they went back and realized that we were twins. And the DNC took my twin and left me in there by providence. Are you hearing me? And all my life I have fought. Everything I fought for. What comes easy for others don't come easy for me. And I didn't understand it before, but now I do. So let me show you something. Why are you under attack? Why demons are interested in you and in your children and in your grandchildren? And if it's not happening now, it will happen one day. So I'm going to teach you as we begin the fast tomorrow to pray preventive prayers. Because there were some prayers I should have prayed long time ago that I didn't know. And I'm seeing things today that could have been averted and avoided. But when it was happening, I was busy doing all kinds of things. I didn't notice it. Watch this. So, Bishop James, you have the ball. You are an attacker. You are an attacker. Bishop Crazy, come. Yeah. Now, as long as he has the ball, then I need one more person. Come. I need one more person. Come. Bishop Buddha. Okay. When the attack is too much on you, the pressure, eh? give the ball to Bishop Bodai. When the ball gets to Bishop Bodai, leave him and go after Bishop Bodai. Okay, so now, attack him. Go after him. Break his leg. Do everything. Don't touch the ball. Don't touch the ball. Bishop James, the attack is, the pressure is too much. Hand over the ball. Bishop, take it. Now go after him. Go after him. Leave him alone. Go after him. Now, let me, ask me, let me look at you. Look at me. Why are they after? They went after Bishop James because of the ball. So when the ball left him and went to Bishop Obodai, they went for Obodai. That is what I tell young pastors. If you think I'm under attack, so you are enjoying and you are happy and you think there's something wrong with me, wait till the ball come to you. The people, the demons on my case, will leave me alone and come after you. Are you hearing me, somebody? Say, I hear you. Now, that is not the only thing. There's another group of people, I think they call them the strikers. Eh? Now, so David is a striker. He's a very, no, he doesn't have the ball. He doesn't need to have the ball. He's a striker. So he's a very dangerous person. 
So you have to stay on his case. Watch him. Be around him. Keep an eye on David. Watch him. Make sure he doesn't get the ball. This guy has potential. He's dangerous. If he gets the ball, he will score. So stay around him. Block him. Make sure he doesn't move his leg or his feet. Put your leg on his leg. Make sure he doesn't get the ball. You see, watch this. Somebody say potential. Say monitoring spirits. Say familiar spirits. Why was the enemy interested in me before I was born again? Why did I lose three of my fingers? He tried to kill me. Why was the enemy out to kill me? And since I've gone born again, he's followed me and my children. Why? Say potential. You. You don't know why you've been through what you've been through. You look at yourself and you don't deserve some of the things you've been through. You look at yourself and you say, why do I have to go through this? The loneliness, the rejection, and everything. It does the embarrassment. You know why? You are potential. You know what potential is? Potential is what you are capable of becoming that you haven't yet become. So even though you don't have the ball, even though you don't have the ball, the enemy, somebody knows that the day you get the ball is a goal. So here, the reason why you are under attack, the enemy knows that the day you get that ball and you put your leg on it and you pass it this way, it's a goal. Somebody say, it's a goal. So that is why you are under attack. That's why everything for you is a fight. It's a fight. Because the enemy knows when you get it, you help others. When you get it, you bless others. He knows when you are blessed, many will be blessed. And there are people who don't go through anything and they get it. Have you seen people who can't score and they, give, they pass the ball and their opponent take the ball from them? No potential. Say low energy. You are high energy. And the enemy knows. That when the ball gets to you, it's a goal. So they set demons to fight you, to come after you, to attack you. So today, your chest. Tomorrow, your kidney. Next tomorrow, liver. Next tomorrow, right eye. Next tomorrow, left eye. And then your knee. Then your shoulders. Then your spine. Then your waist. Then your butts. Then this, then that. Every time something is happening, you know what they are? Distractions. The enemy doesn't want you to concentrate because he knows if you concentrate and you get it right, he's in trouble. So what he has to do is to set demons on you. That was what happened to Paul. And let me close with that. Give me the scripture. Paul. Paul said, look at what Paul said. Give it to me quickly. Second Corinthians. Look at Paul. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you, Bishop James. Let me... Let me close with this quickly, quickly. My time is up. Vision, quickly. He said, a tongue, a messenger of Satan, quickly. Second Corinthians 12, 7. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. Look at it. Look at it. Lest I should be exalted above measure uh -huh. through the abundance of the revelations uh -huh. that was given to me a thorn in the flesh. You see, because of what you carry, say what you carry, what you carry, what you carry. You carry something. You're going somewhere. You carry a dream. Look at what women go through when they are pregnant. They go through all kinds of craziness when they are pregnant. And they endure because they know they are carrying life. And one of these days, they deliver that baby and they smile. They are happy. You are carrying destiny in you. You are carrying a nation. You are carrying great things. You are an inventor. You are going to come up with something that will touch the whole world and bless humanity. I'm telling you. You may not see it right now. You may just look at yourself as somebody, I didn't go to school abroad. You know a lot of the presidents of this country didn't go to school abroad. Yeah, a lot of them didn't. We have ministers who didn't go to any school abroad. They went to school. They went to school here. And yet, they became great. The school you went to, 
who your father and your mother is, the color of your skin, and where you were born, and your background has nothing to do with potential. You carry potential. That is the reason why your children, the ones that are going through hell and high water. I was talking to a mother the other day. I said, Papa, I'm so scared that when my phone rings, I don't know what I'm going to hear about my son. He's never around. I don't know where he is. I'm so scared that anytime the phone rings, when I pick up the phone, I don't know what I'll hear tomorrow. And I said, trust God. Trust God. Trust God. He's in God's hands. He's in his hands. Lift up your hands.